Hall in Monticello. They're committed to providing their clients with civil and structural engineering, construction management, funding procurement, surveying, GIS mapping, and material testing. They use state-of-the-art equipment to help you meet your budget, schedule, and deadlines. Visit jonesanddemille.com or visit them on Facebook. Since 1982, Jones and DeMille Engineering, your infrastructure professional shaping the quality of life. By now, I'm sure you've all heard about the quality, comfortable furniture at Canab Furniture in Canab. But just for a reminder, let me mention that Canab Furniture currently has great pricing on all furniture and carpet throughout the store. In need of a new sofa or recliner? Go to Canab Furniture. How about a mattress? Go to Canab Furniture. Maybe it's time for a new dinner table or bedroom furniture. Again, Canab Furniture is the place to go. Quality furniture and carpet at even better prices. Canab Furniture, 681 Shinley Drive in Canab. Welcome back here to Desert Hills High School. Robert Lovell with you alongside Dennis Aldridge as we get ready for more playoff basketball action as we have the Duchesne Eagles, the top of the number two seed out of Region 16, and the Canal Lady Cowboys going up against or the number four seed out of Region 18. And that's keeping the starting lineup. Starting off with, first off, the home team, that is the Duchesne Eagles. First off, a junior number 14, Ashlyn Gatherum. A senior number 15, Ashton Spencer. A junior number 25, Jade Moon. A junior number 32, Mackenzie Nilsson. And a junior number 33, Alyssa Grant. And now the starters for the Canab Lady Cowboys. A junior number four, Josie Latham. A sophomore number 22, Brindley Cornell. A junior number 23, Sydney McDonald. A senior number 32, Caitlin Church. And a junior number 34, Cassidy Glover. Those are the starters for the two teams. We are set and ready to go as the two teams are set for the tip. For Canab, Josie Latham will jump it, and she will control it into the backcourt. Sydney McDonald has it for the Lady Cowboys. McDonald brings it across the timeline. Man defense by Duchesne. Right side, she'll go to Latham. Up top, it comes now to Caitlin Church. Nothing inside. Left side, she'll swing it to McDonald. Quick three from the wing. Off the back room, no good. Long rebound, and Duchesne has it. Going the other way is going to be Alyssa Grant. Ball tipped away from behind. It remains Duchesne basketball underneath the basket. Good speed both ways there. So Lady quick, Eagles quick. basketball. And it'll be Alyssa Grant to inbound the junior for the Eagles. Goes left side, open is Gatherum, puts it up and scores, and Duchesne strikes first. Nice little backdoor play off the inbound, coming back that backside, nobody picked her up, easy layup. Now right side, it's going to be the Cal Lady Cowboys with it up top, Church has it. Looking left side, and she's able to get it to McDonald. Down the lane, she goes left side to Glover. Glover backs out on the wing and hands off back to Brindley Cornell. Cornell picks up her dribble and comes back to McDonald, and they're going to reset the offense. Left side, it'll come to Cornell. She'll hand off the church high left, up top to Latham. Latham holding, swings it high right to McDonald. Sydney with it, comes up top to Glover, swing it left side back to Cornell. Man defense by Duchesne, pretty patient offense so far by Canab, haven't looked to attack much. They hand off back to Latham. So that reset will the Lady Cowboys. And picks up her dribble coming out tight on her as the defense. She'll get it to Cornell on the other timeline. And Cornell hands it off to McDonald. And again, they reset offensively for the Canab Cowboys. This is good man-to-man -man defense by, by Duchesne out there. They're really disturbing everything they're trying to do offensively. Latham for three from the left corner. Going to be blocked. It's on the ground. Picked up by Latham in the short corner. Needs help. Tries to pass it out. Knocked away and taken away by Duchesne as Jade Moon comes up with a steal. Now Alyssa Grant yo-yos on the Thunder logo. Right side high. She'll go to Moon into the corner. And driving into the baseline will be Nielsen. And foul on the shot. She'll go to the line. Will Nielsen. Good move on that baseline side. Again, uh, pretty active. On that baseline, got up in there, got double teamed, but got hit by one of them. So two free throws coming for Mackenzie Nilsson. The foul goes to Caitlin Church. That'll be her first and the team's first. And nothing but net on the first free throw by Nilsson. Make it 3 nothing to Shane here in the early going. 6-13 to go in the first quarter. Second free throw from Nielsen is on its way off the back of the rim. High bounce, got it to fall, so she makes them both. She's got two points, 4-0 Duchesne early in this one. 6-10 to go in the first quarter. Canab looking for their first basket. High left side, Glover to the wing. She'll go to Cornell. Up top, it comes to Latham. She'll take the straightaway three, knocks it down. Josie Latham gets the Lady Cowboys on the board. 4-3 is your score. 
That was the best offensive set they had. They were able to get the back pick on the back side, brought her up high on that screen and laid and, and got a nice shot. Bounce pass across the key for Nielsen for Duchesne. Misses it hard, got her a rebound, goes back up, jump ball as she got tied up first. And possession row will favor Duchesne, so Eagles basketball underneath. Can have a little lucky there. They got loose on the back side and missed a layup, but they, Duchesne was loose on the back side. Grant inbound, comes right side, got it in, off the glass, no good, but a foul called. Ashton Spencer, gonna, oh, that's, that's gonna be Jade Moon that'll go to the line to shoot two for the Eagles. Josie Latham picks up her first foul, second team foul on Kanab. Duchesne be very, being very active on the inside, they're getting a lot of looks close in. Kanab needs to get better position and hold that out of there. First free throw by Moon is off the back of the rim, no good, one more coming. Duchesne's got good size inside. They do. And they get good position off down uh, back screens. Second free throw off the back of the room, no good. Rebound by Latham. So under six to go in the first quarter. Canab with a chance to take their first lead down four to three. Left side, Cornell has it. She'll come up top off the curl to Latham. Latham comes out to McDonald. Backdoor pass, got it oh, to Cornell. Pretty. High off oh. the glass and in. Beautiful pass in the crease backside, top to bottom. From the three-point line to that baseline. That was a beautiful pass between people. So Brindley Cornell makes it 5-4. Canal with the lead, currently on a 5-0 run. Up top is Spencer. She'll go off the screen by Grant. Got cut off defensively. Kicks it out to Moon. Moon open for three. High arch off the glass. Didn't draw iron on the back side. Rebound by the Cow Lady Cowboys and knocked it to the bounds. Last touch by Moon. It'll be at Canal basketball. Aided by the official. <laughs> That's right. He kind of got in the way. They couldn't get to it. So up the floor now comes Sydney McDonald. She'll go right elbow to Church. Caitlin faces up, goes right to Latham off the screen for three again. Allen's an air ball. Rebound on the backside, saved by Cornell, but it comes in to gather them for Duchesne. 4.48 to go in the quarter. Gather them across the timeline. Comes up top to Grant. Grant comes right side high to Spencer through her hands, but she corrals it. Up top, she'll go to Moon. Left side, she swings it to gather them. Back to Moon on the wing. Free throw line extended. Moon picks up her dribble and hands off left wing to Grant. And Grant's going to come back and reset. Cross over dribble, get a drive, split the double team, scoop it up too hard off the glass. Rebound on the backside by Spencer. She goes too hard. And rebound by Cornell. She tries to save it as she falls out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds by Grant. Can have basketball. That's three or four offensive boards now that, that, that Duchesne has gotten down deep and has not converted on. Uh, you mentioned their size. They are controlling the boards, but they're not converting on the extra chances. Sidney McDonald will pass inside, knocked away, but picked up by. Glover, so Kanab maintains possession here. McDonald off the screen. She'll take the straightaway three. High arch, short off the rim. Rebound down the lane taken by Jade Moon for Duchesne. Ashton Spencer will bring it across the timeline for the Eagles. Skip pass underneath. Gatherum got wide open, and she'll easily lay it in. Make it now 6-5. Duchesne on top. They're trying to, Kanab's trying to double team out on the wings and double team out high, but they're not rotating good on the backside, and they're leaving girls down there out wide open. That time she didn't miss the layup but they've got to do a better job. Someone is not rotating down like they should. Left side, Cornell has it. She'll launch the three for the Cowboys, and that's going to be off the glass. No good. Rebound by Grant for Duchesne. Up ahead, right side, she'll get it to Moon. Moon going to drive baseline, cut off the low block, step back, eight-footer, knocks it down. Jade Moon to the bucket. She's got her first points in the game. And Coach Glazer wants to talk about it. 3.22 to go in the first quarter. It is Duchesne 8, Canal 5 on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. Honey's Marketplace invites you to experience their refreshing variety and signature items. Honey's Marketplace features a wide selection of camping supplies, a garden nursery, and fresh floral department. Experience fresh-baked artisan breads and pastries in their bakery. Check out their great cut fruit program with wonderful fresh cut fruit daily. And everyone loves Honey's famous talking truck, Rusty. Get all this with the hometown service you deserve. Fresh, friendly, and close to home. Honey's Marketplace, 260 East, 300 South in Kanab. And welcome back here to Desert Hills High School. Coming out of the break, Dennis, if you're Coach Glacier there, what are you telling your team here down three points early? Well, they can't panic yet, obviously, but you're seeing the contrast in styles right now. Everything Duchesne is trying to do is down inside, and everything Kanab is doing right now is an outside shot. And I think they're hurrying those outside shots. They've made a couple, but I think they've got to settle down, work harder for the good shot and not force it. But they've got to establish an inside game, and then they've got to play be, be better on the backside of their defense. Up top is Josie Latham right now for Kanab. She'll go right side high to McDonald. 
Into the game, by the way, for Duchesne, Megan Riemond checks in. Getting a breather is Nielsen, and now got a foul called away from the basketball as there were some screens happening down low. It's going to go against Duchesne. Coach Jessen wants an explanation for it as well. Well, it could have gone either way. I mean, the, the Knab girl was fighting through the screen, uh, but the screen was moving, so you could have called it either way if you'd have wanted to, but it went it went Knab's way this time. Foul called on Ashlyn Gatherum, her first, team's first. And Jesse Anderson in the game now for Knab on the entry pass. It'll come in a Glover. Big block by Ashton Spencer out of bounds. Remains Knab basketball. That was a nice play on the backside. And same thing Duchesne's been doing, but, but, but Knab's got blocked. Left side, Glover has it. She'll come out to Cornell. Back into the corner. McDonald open for three. Knocks it down. Sidney McDonald ties it up at 8, 2.45 to go in the first quarter. And that, that was more patient, I think, even though it was quick. But it was more patient, like we talked about working the ball around and getting the shot when you when you really wanted the shot, not just forcing one. Raymond has it right side. She'll come to the wing to Moon. Moon going to drive in, got through the double team, puts it up off the back through. No good. Rebound by Cornell for Kanab. 2.24 to go in the first quarter, tied at 8. Up top it'll come at 2. Glover swing it left side to Latham. Low block to Anderson. Back up to Glover on the wing, or Latham, excuse me, on the wing for 3. Too hard. Backside rebound by Cassidy Glover, and she'll lay it in. But by the virtue of going inside out on that play, even though you missed the three-point shot, it gave everybody a chance to get into position. They got the backside offensive board and then were able to put it back in. Left side, Spencer drives, tries to pass across the lane and threw it out of bounds. Turnover by Duchesne will be there first. And Nelson back into the game for the Eagles. Leaving will be Jade Moon and Autumn Shinsky into the game for the Lady Cowboys. I think it's Latham that is getting, or maybe Cornell that's getting a breather. Friendly Cornell. Right side, Shinsky has it on the wing. Free throw line extended. Up top it comes to Anderson. Looking underneath, nothing there. Comes back to the wing to Shinsky. Minute 45 to go in the quarter. 10-8 Kanab. Up top to Glover. Lob left side to Anderson. Way over, at, over her head, out of bounds. Turnover by Kanab is their second. I think she thought about shooting that thing at the last minute, decided she better pass it. So it was halfway between a shot and, and a pass. They're going to have to do something different on offense, though, because D Duchesne right now is going a box and one kind of. They're taking McDonald completely out of the game offensively. At least they're trying to at this point. Up top, Raymond has it. She'll go left side to Spencer. Skip pass right side to Nilton. Going to go baseline, cut off in the low block, and double dribble is the call as she picked it up, dribbled again, kind of lost the handle on it, and used yeah. the dribble to pick it back up and turn over by Duchesne as their second. The contact between her and the Kanab girl knocked, you know, dis disrupted that whole play. And the Kanab was playing good position, did not try to jump and block, just sat in there. Sidney McDonald for the three, quickly off the glass, no good. Rebound inside, going to be taken by Spencer for Duchesne. Down the floor will come to uh, Gatherum, and off her hands out of bounds, couldn't quite hold on to it, so turnover by the Eagles will be their third. The the Jade Moon back into the game for Duchesne. Gatherum will check out. And coming into the game now for Kanab. Jesse. is Jesse Glover. Play call comes in from Coach Glaver from the Glazier from the Canal bench. McDonald across the timeline goes right, set up the screen by Anderson. Now backs out to the three-point line. Up top she comes. And working away left side it will be Jesse Glover. She's going to put up the runner. No good. Missed it. Short rebound by Grant for Duchesne. Grant coming the other way. Going to dribble right side, got to the elbow, bounce pass inside to Raymond, and she'll be tied up, a reach and foul called first, though. And that'll go against Cassidy Glover for Kanab. That's her first, team's third. Just trying to go high post, low post on a bounce pass. And Glover thought she could tie it up, but got a little arm in the process. 43 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ashlyn Gatherum back into the game for Duchesne. Alyssa Grant gets a breather for the rest of the quarter, likely. Gatherum to inbound underneath. Got two right side on the key, one left. They screen through, Ford lob it up top, and they're going to the backcourt. And running it down for Duchesne is Jade Moon. Across the timeline, picked up tightly by Sidney McDonald. Hands off up top to Spencer, right side high now to Gatherum. Guarded by Shinsky, up top to Riemann. Hands off again to Moon, left side high will go to Nielsen. Nielsen guarded by Anderson, comes back up top to Moon. Now to Riemann, they're just playing to keep away around the three-point line right now are the Eagles. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Down the lane, they get it into Nielsen. And she'll come right back out to Moon up top. Left side to Gatherum, 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Back to Moon. Coach Jessen calls a new play, left side to Gatherum. Back to Moon on the wing, eight seconds to go in the quarter. Up top, Riemann. 
Man defense by Kanab. Right wing, it'll go to Nielsen. They got a real it. mismatch inside, but they're just not taking advantage of it. Now they're just going to throw it up at the buzzer and over the backboard it goes. And at the end of one, Kanab has the lead 10 to 8 over Duchesne on the Mid Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. Amerigas is the nation's largest supplier of propane and propane equipment. With over 650 locations all across the country, you can sleep easy knowing Amerigas is right there to serve you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Make it Amerigas. For a location near you, check your local yellow pages or visit us at Amerigas.com. Enjoy benefits such as automatic delivery, flexible payment options, and customer referral awards. Amerigas, America's propane company. Reliable, safe, and responsive. Make sure you plan a trip to Lumber Plus True Value for all of your project needs. Right now, a DeWalt 7 and a quarter inch circular saw blade is only $4.99. This 24 tooth tough tungsten carbide tipped blade has an anti stick rim to reduce friction and gum up. An ultra thin kerf results in smoother cuts. Check out this great bargain of the month along with other project essentials while supplies last. At Lumber Plus True Value in Kanab, behind every project is a true value. And welcome back here to Desert Hills High School. Robert Lovell with you alongside Dennis Aldridge as Kanab leads Duchesne at 10 to 8 at the end of the first quarter in this 2A play-in game. And Dennis, what'd you see in that first quarter? Well, I, 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 what I saw was is when Kanab plays controlled and works for a good shot, they're getting some good ones and they're making something happen. But they're kind of in a hurry at times to try and throw shots up and it's throwing them off. They need to work a little bit harder for good shots. Jesse Glover in and out from the right elbow and on the rebound, it's going to be Cassidy Glover that has it. She'll be fouled underneath, so it will be Kanab basketball. I'd assume on the baseline, are they going to give her the shot? Going to give her the foul shots. Though so, so she's trying to put it back up, but the Duchesne side of things is they need to take advantage of their size inside. They're trying to, but they're not converting when they get the ball down in there. First free throw by Cassidy Glover is good. She's got three points. Back into the game, Brindley Cornell for Kanab. Autumn Shinsky will get a breather. You talked about the mismatch there at the end of the first quarter that they were trying to get. It was Shinsky guarding the, guarding the much taller Gatherum, and they just couldn't find that match, mismatch down low. Well, they wouldn't throw it in. It was there, but they wouldn't throw it into her for some reason. Second free throw is good by Glover, so 12 to 8. Kanab with the lead. This is their largest lead of the game. Left side, Nilsson has it. Out to Gatherum, and the corner will go to Riemann. On to the wing now to Grant. Skip pass left side to Nilsson. Nilsson holding, goes in the corner now to Gatherum, guarded by Brindley Cornell. Up top to Riemann. Riemann going to go off the screen, set by Moon, got cut off by McDonald, comes back out to Moon, and Moon will back up and reset the offense with a pass to Gatherum. Left side to Grant. 7-17 to go in the first half. 12-8, to eight, your score. Can have the four-point lead. Right wing, driving is Jade Moon, gets the low block, pass across the lane, knocked around, picked up by Nelson. she'll be blocked by Jesse Anderson, and coming away with it is Cassidy Glover for the Canab Lady Cowboys. Again, the same thing, they get it back inside, but they don't take advantage of it. Nice play by Canab. Transition three, Brindley Cornell knocks it down for the Lady Cowboys. Good cross-court pass by, by McDonald, and you know, as good as her shooting is, I'm tremendously impressed with her passing. She's making passes most people don't even see, She's making great passes to people for wide open opportunities. 15-8 lead now by Kanab. Right side Gatherum. She'll go to the short corner to Grant. And Grant dribbles it off her foot out of bounds. Turnover by the Eagles will be there for I think Kanab and Duchesne now panicking a little bit. They've gone away from their inside game. I don't know what kind of outside game they've got. Uh, Moon's tried an outside shot. Nobody else really has. But they've got to get something outside to reopen that inside. Timeout called by Coach Jessen. We'll take it with 6.35 to go in the first half. It's Kanab 15 and Duchesne 8 on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. Southern Utah News, the leading newspaper in Utah, announces some exciting changes to the paper. Southern Utah News is now presented in broadsheet format, which makes it bigger and better while still remaining small enough to care. The award-winning Southern Utah News provides extensive news coverage that affects residents of Southern Utah. Call the Southern Utah News for a subscription or for all types of printing services such as company invoices, letterhead, pamphlets, business forms, and more. 644-2900. That's 644-2900. 
Zion Pharmacy is your old-fashioned corner drugstore with a total health care center offering computerized prescription service, prompt refills, and friendly service. Zion Pharmacy carries a fine selection of tasteful gifts and greeting cards, and they can bill Medicare for diabetic and respiratory supplies. Courtney can also compound a medication, changing its strength, taste, or route of delivery to best suit the patient. Since 1984, Zion Pharmacy has been your old-fashioned corner drugstore. 14 East Center in Kanab, your gateway to better health. So 15-8 is your score as we come out of the timeout. Kanab leading Duchesne here on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. And Kanab basketball, the chance to put their lead up to a 7 or it should be 9 or possibly at 10. Right side high, Latham has it. Lob inside to Jesse Anderson working on. Nilsson puts up the shot, blocked and a foul called. And Anderson will go to the line to shoot two for Kanab. Nicely done. Put the ball down in there, put some pressure on the interior and make him work a little bit inside there. Nice play. See if she can convert. Anderson at the free throw line. The foul, by the way, was called on Mackenzie Nilsson, her first and the team's third, and she converts the first. This gal here, possibility of, if she, if she came off the bench, that's a possibility of a sub of the game right now because she's made some real positive strides in the time that she's been in, both offensively and defensively. Yes, she has. Second free throw by Anderson. Around the rim, no good. Rebound tipped up by Cornell, and last touch by Cornell, so Duchesne basketball. 16 to 8, your score. Largest lead of the game right now is that eight-point lead for Canal. Grant will come across the timeline, right side up ahead. She'll go to Moon. Moon dribbles into the corner. Now picks it up, guarded tightly by Latham, looking for help and able to get it out of her hands. But ball's knocked around. It's on the ground, diving forward with everybody and jump ball. Possession arrow favors Duchesne. So Duchesne basketball underneath. 6.08 to go in the half, 16 to 8 your score. Grant will pass in, looking left side the, down the lane, nothing there. Now she'll lob it out through the hands of Latham, picked up by Moon. She tries to drive and a reach in foul called on Brindley Cornell. That's her first and the team's fourth. And again, the number 42, we've mentioned her a couple of times, Jesse Anderson. Again, they tried to go back door off that inbound pass, and she took it away. She guarded two girls down there and denied that backside inbound play. Uh, forcing to go a different direction. Grant again to inbound, looking inside again, can't get it in, and tries to go to the corner, knocked out of bounds by Latham. It remains Duchesne basketball underneath. Coach Jessen not happy with the execution by his team. Well, all the passes that seem to be there in the first quarter have disappeared. Kanab's defense has just taken the life right out of, of Duchesne right now. And a lob into Gatherum, and she's going to get called for the travel as she tried to dribble. The ball came up, bounced off her head, and a traveling call in between there. So turnover by Duchesne will be their fifth. They're just really struggling right now. 6.02 to go in the first half. Kanab doubling up the Eagles, 16 to eight. Across the timeline comes Sydney McDonald. Off the screen by Anderson, works her way to the left wing. Picks it up, comes up top to Jesse Glover, pump fake, and she's gonna travel as she switched to pivot foot, turnover by Kanab as their third. It's a great move if you can get away with it if your name's Michael Jordan, <laughs> but uh, not legal in high school. the rest of us. <laughs> Across the timeline comes Grant. Picked up by Glover. Works her way left side of the pass to it. Spencer, Spencer, skip pass to Riemann. She'll go baseline, puts it up around Anderson and got it to fall. Much better that time. Controlled herself once she got around. Was able to make something happen there. Right side, Jesse Glover for three. Off the back side of the rim, no good. Grant the rebound for the Eagles. 16 to 10-year score. Can have the six-point lead. 5.25 to go in the first half. Grant crossover dribble, works away left side against Glover. She'll hand off to Spencer. Spencer, low block, or short corner back to Grant. She'll go baseline, puts it up against Anderson, blocked and a foul called. And Alyssa Grant will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, that time the Anderson girl kind of reached down, but kind of reached down with both arms. She had him up in the air. She's played really good position the previous times, but that time she reached out and they got her for the foul. That'll be the first on Jesse, the 15th foul on Knapp. First free throws of the game for Alyssa Grant. In and out on the first one. One more coming. A couple of subs for Knapp. As Caitlin Church is back into the game and Bailey Ramsey checks in for the first time. One more free throw coming now for Alyssa Grant. Second one in and out as well. Rebound is taken by Brindley Cornell. She's come the other way. Up ahead, right side. She'll go to... Uh, Ramsey, Ramsey will come up and hand off to McDonald to set up the offense. Sydney Yo-Yo's near the Thunder logo. Left side high to Latham, off the screen. 
Top of the key, she's going to drive right side around the screen, misses the shot off the glass, a rebound by Grant for Duchesne. Went a little too deep, I think, on that drive and tried to put it up in traffic if she had pulled up and hit that seven-footer. Left side, it'll be Moon with it for the Eagles. To the wing, she'll hand to Grant. Grant going to go baseline around the screen, comes back out to Moon, picked up by Latham. Latham picks up her dribble and hands up to Spencer. Spencer left elbow, looks to drive down the lane. Ball gets knocked away, it's on the ground, and it's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow favors Kanab, so the sixth Duchesne turnover. Full court press put on now by the Eagles coming off the turnover as Josie Latham will inbound for Kanam. Looking for McDonald, and they get it to her on the curl. And McDonald able to easily go around Spencer and bring it, break their press with the, oh, oh, oh. with the dribble. Passed on the floor, knocked away by Church, and she couldn't quite handle it. Picked up by Grant for the Eagles. Beautiful pass. The, the, the receiver wasn't expecting it, wasn't ready for it. She led her directly. She threw her open to the, to the basket. Just wasn't ready for it. Beautiful pass. Up top, Riemann has it. She'll come high right now to the wing. She'll go to Gatherham. Up top to Moon. Swing it high left to Riemann. To the wing, left side to Grant. Er, Grant. She's going to drive. Puts up the shot off the glass. Missed it. Short rebound. Latham for Kanab. She's going to push the pace the other way. Two on two. Going to dribble left side around the defense. Off the glass. Missed it. Short rebound by Riemann. Or, me, that's going to be Spencer for Duchesne. Coming the other direction. And then she throws it away as she tried to cross court pass out of bounds. Turnover by Duchesne. Threw it right between two players. You know, poor... Poor passing. One side is throwing great passes and people aren't ready for them. <laughs> the other one's just throwing bad passes. But I, Duchesne must not have an, an outside game at all. They are, they are reluctant to shoot any kind of shot from the outside. Riley Blazard in the game for Duchesne. And also coming back into the game is going to be Mackenzie Nilsson. Right side, it'll be Ramsey with it for Kanab. Dribbles into the corner, now needs help. She'll hand off to McDonald. McDonald gets in the lane, Whoa, and she... there's the double dribble on McDonald. <laughs> I thought she was going to get away with it for a minute. <laughs> Easy to see from up here. Yes, it was. Coming right at us. Both teams have kind of gotten ragged now. They've broken down offensively. Alyssa Grant will bring it up the floor for Duchesne. Works her way left side, now picks up the basketball, skip pass right side to Blazer. She's going to drive baseline, puts up the runner off the bottom of the backboard, no good. Nilsson the rebound and the putback for the Eagles. Good job, good position by Nilsson to be there to get that rebound. So now a 4-0 run by Duchesne and what has been really a scoring drought for both teams over the course of the last three minutes. Down inside, they get it into Caitlin Church, turn around, off the rim, no good, but a foul call, then she'll go to the line to shoot two. Great position down in there. She really sunk that deep and drove the defense back up underneath the basket. Great positioning. Foul called on Alyssa Grant. That's her first and the fourth team foul on Duchesne. Caitlin Church at the line for the Lady Cowboys. First free throw is good. Nothing but net. Her first point of the game. All five starters have now scored for Kanab. Ashton Spencer back into the game for Duchesne. And Cassidy Glover back in for Kanab. Second free throw from Church is good, so she makes them both. Caitlin Church now with two points, and it's 18 to 12. Snaps the 4-0 Duchesne run. Clark will come left side to Jade Moon for Duchesne. Ball gets knocked out of the hands by Latham, and Latham comes up with a steal for the Cowboys. Now, Tim McDonald across the timeline as Coach Glazer says, go. Up top, she'll hand it off. Three-pointer on the way from Glover. That's going to be in and out. Rebound by Nilsson for Duchesne. Good shot, good shot in the rotation of the offense, even though it didn't go in. That's the kind you like to see. 2.34 to go in the first half. Left side, it'll go to Moon. Guarded by Latham. Going to go away from the screen, drive left side, puts up the shot, knocks it down from the low block as Jade Moon with four points. Sydney McDonald the other way. High left side, she'll come to Glover, swing it to the wing to Cornell. Up top to Latham. Top of the key, guarding the man defense. Now right side to McDonald. Up top, she'll come to Caitlin Church. Left side of the corner to Latham. Looking in the lane to McDonald. Got it to her, being double teamed. Back to Latham for three. Off the back of the rim. High bounce, no good. Rebound going to be taken by Cornell. She'll go back up. Missed it short. And on the rebound, she got her back. And this time, she'll be fouled. That's Caitlin Church that got it. Excuse me. And she'll be fouled and go to the line to shoot two. Working hard down there. She missed her shot off balance. The, uh, the, the player from Duchesne got the rebound. And she just ripped it away from her. And then trying to go back up, she got hit by three different girls. I don't know who they finally gave it to. Gave it to Ashlyn Gatherum, her second. Duchesne's fifth. First free throw from Caitlin Church is Which good is again. 
a beautiful form, beautiful touch from the free throw line. I won't won't jinx her by saying how many in a row that is, <laughs> but that's beautiful touch from the free so throw that line. That means I can't do it either. You better not. All right. You can take credit for it if she does miss, though. <laughs> one more free throw. That beautiful. one is good as well. Beautiful touch. So Church with four points, all of them coming from the free throw line. How about that? That's, that's good shooting, Dex. <laughs> Across the timeline comes Alyssa Grant. Right side, she'll get it to Spencer. Spencer going to drive baseline, cut off in the low block. Now needs help, comes back out to Moon, but threw it behind her. Into the backcourt it goes. Turnover by Duchesne will be there ninth. I, again, I just I marvel at Duchesne. They do a great job with what they're doing, but it's all it's all back screens. They're doing everything off the back screen, the double, double stacks on both sides of the free throw lane. Then they're trying to go down screen, back screen, side screen, trying to get something down low. They just did that. I don't know if they got any three-pointers on the year. I don't even know. Have to look at it and see at the halftime break coming up at the Jones and the Mill Engineering halftime show after this second quarter. A minute 28 to go in the second quarter. Canab leads 20 to 14. McDonald nearly throws uh -huh. away and does as the ball went off the ref and picked up by Spencer. She'll go the other way, scoop it up and score. Four-point game. Really is a break for Duchesne. That ball was going out of bounds. It would have been Duchesne's ball, but it hit the official and stayed in. The, the Canab girl went down behind the official, and Duchesne picks it up and goes down for a layup. Up Good top. use of all the resources in the gym. <laughs> That's right. Ooh. Up top, Glover got it to Latham inside late, but then Latham will be bumped from behind by Ashton Spencer. That'll be her first and the team six, so can have basketball underneath. Yeah, you're right on that. That was wide, wide open. She finally got it there, but it was late. The defense recovered and knocked her down, but a little bit late on that pass. Cindy McDonald inbounds left side to Glover, out to Cornell, off the screen, back to McDonald for three. Off the Ooh. back side of the rim, no good. High bounce, Glover has it. She'll go back up, blocked by Nielsen. Ball's on the ground, and Grant comes with it for Duchesne. 100 minutes to go, 48 seconds. Grant will bring it across the timeline. 20 to 16, Kanam as Duchesne looks to close it to within two or possibly one. Left side to Spencer. She's going to drive, got cut off, and hit the floor. Ooh. Kept her dribble alive, they say. Turn around, puts up the shot, knocks oh. it down. Jade Moon with the bucket. She's got six. <laughs> A great presence of mind. You're right. It was a Harlem Globetrotter move to get moved to get knocked down and keep dribbling, then stand up and shoot it in. 20 seconds to go in the half. Sidney McDonald going to go off the screen by Church. Works back to the way. There's the pick and roll inside of Church, tied up by Grant. Great defense and possession arrow favors Duchesne. So a turnover by Canal. Looked like a great breakaway to the basket, and uh, the, the defensive player for Duchesne just kind of reached out and held on. Across the timeline comes Alyssa Grant. Up ahead, left side, it'll go. Now back to Grant up top. Guarded tightly by Cornell. Ball gets tipped away, she gets it back. Into the corner, she goes to Spencer. Puts up the shot with three seconds left. Too hard. Rebound to the back side, saved by Gatherum. Out of bounds it goes. As the first half comes to an end, it'll be Kanab at 20 and Duchesne 18. We'll take the break and come back with the Jones Intermill Engineering Halftime Show on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. For super low prices and weekly specials, stop by Kane County's full-service grocer, Glazier's Family Market in Kanab. Not only do they have the highest standard of customer service and the friendliest checkers in Utah, you'll save 15 cents per gallon on high-quality Chevron gasoline when you spend $50 or more. And you'll save at Glazier's Family Market with their weekly specials. For guaranteed freshness in their meat and produce departments plus short lines, visit Kane County's full-service grocer, Glazier's Family Market in Kanab. CC Auto Parts, your Napa Auto Parts store in Kanab is under new ownership. You'll receive the same top quality service you've been accustomed to as new owner Ryan Black purchased the store from his grandfather, Curtis Cutler, where Ryan's been working for the past three years. Ryan also has 12 years experience with Napa Auto Parts and has a firm commitment to serving the community. Under new ownership and located in the same place, CC Auto Parts, your Napa Auto Parts store, 115 South, 100 East in Kanab. For over 75 years, Garcane Energy has provided quality electrical service to South Central Utah and Northern Arizona. Garcane Energy's first lines were energized in December 1939. Now Garcane serves over 16,000 square miles of service territory, including four national parks with over 2,200 miles of line. Garcane Energy just isn't about electricity. It's about improving the quality of life for their customers. That's why they give back to the community and support the Kanab Cowboys in local 1A2A schools. Garcane Energy, quality service and local control. For enjoyable Western dining, there's only one stop in Southern Utah, Houston's Trails Inn Restaurant in Kanab. Stop in for their special chicken fried steak with Bob's homemade country gravy and delicious Western entrees. 
They also offer takeout. Just call 644-2488. That's 644-2488. Houston Trails in features remote site catering. Anywhere, anytime, any place. Just phone 435-899-2140. So make plans to stop by Houston Trails in restaurant and mobile catering it can have, where the waitresses wear guns on their hips and a smile on their lips. For integrity, honesty, and technical expertise, think of Jones & DeMille Engineering. With offices in Richfield, Roosevelt, Price, Manti, Utah Valley, St. George, Vernal, and Monticello, they're committed to providing their clients with civil and structural engineering, construction management, funding procurement, surveying, GIS mapping, and material testing. They use state-of-the-art equipment to help you meet your budget, schedule, and deadlines. Visit jonesanddemille.com or visit them on Facebook. Since 1982, Jones & DeMille Engineering, your infrastructure professional shaping the quality of life. By now, I'm sure you've all heard about the quality, comfortable furniture at Canab Furniture in Canab. But just for a reminder, let me mention that Canab Furniture currently has great pricing on all furniture and carpet throughout the store. In need of a new sofa or recliner? Go to Canab Furniture. How about a mattress? Go to Canab Furniture. Maybe it's time for a new dinner table or bedroom furniture. Again, Canab Furniture is the place to go. Quality furniture and carpet at even better prices. Canab Furniture, 681 Shinley Drive in Canab. Honey's Marketplace invites you to experience their refreshing variety and signature items. Honey's Marketplace features a wide selection of camping supplies, a garden nursery, and fresh floral department. Experience fresh baked artisan breads and pastries in their bakery. Check out their great cut fruit program with wonderful fresh cut fruit daily. And everyone loves Honey's famous talking truck, Rusty. Get all this with the hometown service you deserve. Fresh, friendly, and close to home. Honey's Marketplace, 260 East, 300 South in Kanab. And welcome back here to Desert Hills High School. Robert Lovell with you alongside Dennis Aldridge. This is the Jones and the Mill Engineering Halftime Show. Jones and the Mill Engineering sponsors local programs supporting academic and athletic achievements, building lasting relationships, and working passionately as a winning combination. That's Jones and the Mill Engineering. At the half, it is Kanab leading Duchesne 20 to 18. And Dennis, what's your takeaway from this first half? It's refreshing to see a game that's competitive. <laughs> yes, There's it been is. so many blowouts and bad blowouts today. I mean, it's been terrible. 60 point wins, 40 point wins. Uh, this is fun to watch, and these two teams battling. It's fun to, to watch also the, the chess effect going on as the coaches are trying to adjust to what the other teams are doing. It's fun to watch so far. Yeah, it has been a fun game, and at the half, it is again a two point game here. And it looked like for a minute that Canab might blow it open up 16 to 8, and then uh, Duchesne came right back. Yeah, and that's, uh, the, the, again, the, the chess that's going on. The coaches trying to work with their strength and make, make good things happen out of their strength, which for Duchesne is the inside game, the extra shots on offensive rebounds, the drive off the picks, the back picks, and things like that to be able to get the shots down close. You asked if uh, Duchesne has hit three, a three this year. They have hit 37 threes as a team. Ashlyn Gatherum has 12 three-pointers on the season, and then Ashton Spencer has 10. Other than that, it's one or two for a handful of other players. So those two are the ones that can shoot it. And it, as I look back on that first half, Kanab defensively was out on them out on the three-point line. Well, I was going to suggest a key to the game in the second half was for Kanab to back off, <laughs> clog the middle and not let them do anything inside and challenge them to shoot the outside shot. Uh, obviously, they've seen the scouting report. They know they can shoot the outside, so they're extending the defense. But when you extend the defense, that works into the hands of, of Duchesne because now they can pack the middle and all those back screens and things and the ec extra rebounds and extra shots that they get. I think if I'm Kanab, I still might think about maybe backing off and challenge them. If they start to hit them, then we can pick that defense back up. But, but maybe back up in there, take away that middle, get some help back in there for those girls inside so they don't get those second shots. Possibility. But I'm not coaching, so it's easy to make that recommendation. <laughs> Let's take a look at the first half stats in this one. First half for Kanab, five points from Brindley Cornell, four apiece from Caitlin Church and Cassidy Glover, three points apiece from Josie Latham and Sydney McDonald, and one point off the bench by Jesse Anderson. As a team, they are seven for eight from the free throw line in this first half. Great number there. Yeah, and that, that's so key in so many ball games. doing a great job. Great shooting touch from the free throw line. And then they do have seven turnovers in this first half. They did have five of those seven coming in the second quarter, so that could also play into the reason, part of the reason why they allowed Duchesne to come back. Yeah, that, that stopped the blowout, uh, those, those turnovers. They got sloppy. They began to get sloppy. And again, they went back a little bit what they did early in the first quarter, which it looked to me like a bit of a panic. Instead of working and working and working for that good shot, they kind of got panicky and began to throw the ball all over the place. 
And for Duchesne in this one, six points by Jade Moon. That's a game high at the half. Four points apiece from Mackenzie Nilton and Ashlyn Gatherum. And then two points apiece from Ashton Spencer and Megan Raymond. As a team, they are just two for six from the free throw line in this game. And they have nine turnovers in this first half. Well, and, and, and the inequity at the free throw line, again, is another reason I'm thinking, make them shoot the shot beyond 15. Yeah. Let's see what they can do. And, and take away the inside the 15-foot shot and the second rebound, so again, with the free throws and the, and, and the reluctance to even shoot the outside shot. If I'm Kanab, I might have that in my mind to maybe back up a little bit. And so we'll watch and see if that's one thing they do coming out of the locker room here going into the second half. At the half, it is Kanab 20, Duchesne 18. This has been the Jones in the Mill Engineering Halftime Show from Slam Dunks to Buzzer Beaters. The Jones in the Mill Engineering team is here to help you tackle the toughest infrastructure issues. That's Jones in the Mill Engineering. Two-point Kanab lead. We'll take the break and come back with the second half next on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. The Kane County School District wants to wish the Kanab High School Cowboys good luck this season. Kane County School District, where excellent instruction empowers immeasurable opportunities. The home of Kanab Elementary, Kanab Middle, and Kanab High School, along with Valley Elementary and Valley High, and Big Water School and Lake Powell School. Good luck once again to the Kanab High School Cowboys from the staff at the Kane County School District. Make sure you plan a trip to Lumber Plus True Value for all of your project needs. Right now, a DeWalt 7 and a quarter inch circular saw blade is only $4.99. This 24 tooth tough tungsten carbide tipped blade has an anti stick rim to reduce friction and gum up. An ultra thin kerf results in smoother cuts. Check out this great bargain of the month along with other project essentials while supplies last. At Lumber Plus True Value in Kanab, behind every project is a true value. Amerigas is the nation's largest supplier of propane and propane equipment. With over 650 locations all across the country, you can sleep easy knowing Amerigas is right there to serve you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Make it Amerigas. For a location near you, check your local yellow pages or visit us at Amerigas.com. Enjoy benefits such as automatic delivery, flexible payment options, and customer referral awards. Amerigas, America's propane company. Reliable, safe, and responsive. Southern Utah News, the leading newspaper in Utah, announces some exciting changes to the paper. Southern Utah News is now presented in broadsheet format, which makes it bigger and better while still remaining small enough to care. The award-winning Southern Utah News provides extensive news coverage that affects residents of Southern Utah. Call the Southern Utah News for a subscription or for all types of printing services, such as company invoices, letterhead, pamphlets, business forms, and more. 644-2900. That's 644-2900. Zion Pharmacy is your old-fashioned corner drugstore with a total health care center offering computerized prescription service, prompt refills, and friendly service. Zion Pharmacy carries a fine selection of tasteful gifts and greeting cards, and they can bill Medicare for diabetic and respiratory supplies. Courtney can also compound a medication, changing its strength, taste, or route of delivery to best suit the patient. Since 1984, Zion Pharmacy has been your old-fashioned corner drugstore. 14 East Center in Kanab, your gateway to better health. And welcome back here to Desert Hills High School. Robert Lovell with you alongside Dennis Aldridge. Kanab basketball coming out of the halftime break and a quick turnover by Kanab. They lead Duchesne 20 to 18, but McDonald tried to go inside and they got tipped and taken away by the Eagles. Yeah, I tried to make that, that sweet pass she made in the first half, but there were a few too many people in there that time. Up top, Grant uh, has it for Duchesne. She'll swing it left side to gather them. Guarded tightly by McDonald, coming off the screen, had the pick and roll open, didn't see it. Rice to go to Grant, get a drive baseline against Cornell, got underneath, now being double teamed, she'll kick it out of the short corner to Moon, into the corner to Spencer. She'll dribble left side into the lane, cut off by McDonald, and now comes back out. Right side to Grant, Grant gonna dribble in against Cornell. Passes out up top to Spencer, high left to Gatherum, into the corner to Nielsen. Nielsen comes back out to Moon, hands off to Grant. Grant off the screen, gonna drive left side, puts up the runner, too hard off the glass, rebound tipped out, and a 15-footer off the batter. 15-footer, partially blocked by Cornell, goes right to gather him, and she'll lay it in for the Eagles' tie ball game. They just got too many bodies down in there. That's why they gotta get some more people in there. Kanab's gotta get bodies. You got, you got three on one inside, and they're all bigger than the, than the Kanab girls. They gotta get some help down in there. Now a 12-4 run by Duchesne. Three-pointer from McDonald off the right side of the rim, no good. Rebound by Spencer for Duchesne. They're looking for the lead. Ashton Spencer left side. She'll come out to Grant. 
And taken away on the pass to gather him by McDonald. She's going the other way. Tries to pass and lost the handle out of bounds. Turnover by Canal will be their ninth. Maybe trying to do too much there. She's trying to pass it across, but by that time the defense had made it up and there was no one to pass it to. It had been a little bit smarter maybe to take that one on in. Try and draw the foul. Into the corner to go to Spencer for the Eagles. Guarded tightly by Cassidy Glover. Pass up top through the legs of Grant, but she's able to pick it up and then she'll be fouled as Brindley Cornell came into her lower leg and knocked her down. Yeah, just going for the ball. Foul on Cornell is her second. Team's first this half. Inbound near the timeline. Latham guarding the inbounds pass. It'll come into the backcourt to Alyssa Grant. Across the timeline. Going to go around Cornell. Dribbles left side pass into the corner to Spencer. She'll drive baseline. Put up the shot off the side of the backboard. No good. Rebound going to be taken by Glover for Canam. Cassidy Glover down the floor left side to Cornell. Thought about the three. Instead dribbles to the top of the key and hands off to Sydney McDonald. She'll reset the offense as she backs out to the Thunder logo. Left side it goes to Cornell. Up top now to Glover. Right side high to Latham. Nothing inside, looking back toward McDonald, nothing there. She looks to drive in, gets cut off, picks up her dribble and comes up top to Glover. Glover picks it up and comes up top to McDonald and again they'll have to reset. They just need to be patient here, not get into dither and throw the ball away. Be patient with it. They're gonna go a four low set offensively are the Lady Cowboys. As McDonald yo-yos near the timeline. In a fake right, goes left, pull up, 12 footer down the lane, nothing but net. Sydney McDonald now with five points. <laughs> She's gonna do that, isolate her every time. She'd load the defense to sleep and went right by the defender. Great look off on the fake right by McDonald. Left side will come to gather him up top now to uh, Moon, high right to Grant. Left side now to Spencer, to the wing, she'll hand off to Moon. Moon gonna fake right, go left, got around Latham, pull up, nice pass across the lane to Nilton who lays it in, tie ball game. Yeah, beautiful pass across the base there. Canab really having trouble with these back screens. They're just not getting off of them. They're not rotating well off those back screens. And they're ending up with, uh, with one girl double teamed and the other with nobody on her, or else they're behind trailing all the way in, just having some real trouble. Cornell tries to lob inside the Glover and uh, not sure what she saw, but it was there was no lane there and it got knocked out of bounds. Remains Canab basketball underneath. Well, the Canab girl had already given up on the position and turned and headed for the other side to, to set a screen and there was nobody returning. Into the game now for Duchesne is going to be, let's see, just checking in for the first time for Duchesne, it looks like, in this half as the pass comes into Glover. That is Ashley, or not, not Gatherum, let's see here. Missed who it was that came in. It's Re Re Reeman. She did come in the game in the first half. There we go. Now we got it right. Reeman in for Duchesne, and Sidney McDonald's going to be fouled on the drive. Foul's going to go against Alyssa Grant. That will be her second. I don't know if it's by design or because of that set with a low 1-4, but Canab's offense, other than McDonald's, has gone to sleep. There's not much happening at all. McDonald left side, kicks it in the right corner to Cornell, and Cornell saves it, but stepped out of bounds as he did, so it'll be at Duchesne basketball. Tried to do the give and go down the lane, give it off on the back side to a nice nifty pass, but both, both players have to be on the same plane. Grant passes it up ahead at two. Moon for Duchesne, left into the corner now to Riemann. Back out to Spencer, skip pass right to the Grant. Got open, drives baseline and misses it too hard off the glass. Rebound inside, it'll be a tie-up possession arrow favors Duchesne. Once again, Kanab gets tied up. They're, they're stumbling over each other, leaving the backside person open for, for Duchesne to go wide open to the basket because they can't get loose from each other. Pass right side on the entry pass from Grant, knocked out of bounds by Cornell, remains Duchesne basketball underneath. 4.07 to go in the third quarter. We've had a total of six points scored in this quarter. Four for Duchesne, two for Canab, and we're tied at 22. Alyssa Grant passes in, knocked away by Glover, but picked up by Moon. Steps around the defense, and she'll miss the shot, but going to the line to shoot two. Just pounding them inside. Just beating them up bad inside is, is Duchesne on Canab. Foul's going to be called on Caitlin Church. That is her second and the team's second. Jade Moon up the line to shoot two. She's 0 for 2 from the charity stripe in the game. And in and out on the first one here. Another idea that's easy from up here is for, for Kanab to get out of the man-to-man -man so they quit chasing these, spot, these, these screens and maybe go to a zone and see what happens for a while. And, and again, clog that middle and, and give the outside shot for a second, see what happens. 
Second free throw is good by Moon. So Duchesne in front, 23-22. That's our first lead change since the first quarter. Up top, Latham, nice pass inside to Caitlin Church. Too hard off the glass. Rebound Moon for Duchesne. He's having a great game, Moon is, both ends of the court. Grant across the timeline, picked up by McDonald. Left side, she'll swing it to Gatherer. Skip pass right side high to Spencer, into the corner to Grant. Guarded by McDonald, going to drive baseline, got it right, right around her, misses the layup, and rebound out of bounds. Last touch by Latham, who was standing out of bounds, and the ball hit her, so Duchesne basketball. Yeah, she got out of bounds, came back in, was still standing on the end line. Timeout going to be called by Kanab. We'll take the break with them. 3.32 to go in the third. It is at Duchesne 23, Kanab 22 on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. For super low prices and weekly specials, stop by Kane County's full-service grocer, Glazier's Family Market in Kanab. Not only do they have the highest standard of customer service and the friendliest checkers in Utah, you'll save 15 cents per gallon on high-quality Chevron gasoline when you spend $50 or more. And you'll save at Glazier's Family Market with their weekly specials. For guaranteed freshness in their meat and produce departments plus short lines, visit Kane County's full-service grocer, Glazier's Family Market in Kanab. One point Duchesne lead as they are currently on a 15 to 6 run against the Canab Lady Cowboys and Duchesne basketball to try to add to that 23 22 lead in the third quarter. Pass left side gets it into Spencer, puts it up off the glass and in. Ashton Spencer got great position and lays it in. Well, she held that position too, slapped her hands before the ball was even given to the out of bound player. She was slapping her hands. She knew she had the position and she was ready for it. 318 to go in the third, lob inside to Glover, out of bounds as they overthrew her. Turnover by Kanab is going to be their 11. They're back to that kind of ratty basketball. They're just not playing sound basketball right now, making ill-advised passes. Up ahead, right side it goes to Nilton in the corner. Pass comes up top to Spencer. Five around the perimeter right now for Duchesne. Now they do get Nilton inside, driving baseline as Moon. They're down to the short corner to gather him. Pump fake, you're going to drive the lane. Blocked by Jesse Anderson, and Anderson came away with it. Another minute, important substitution there, Anderson. Up top, McDonald, left side to Anderson, into the corner to Latham. Nothing inside, Latham looks to drive, gets to the uh, key, and it goes all the way across the key to the right elbow. Left side, she'll go back out. Glover for the 15-footer off the back of the rim, no good. Anderson had the rebound, couldn't quite get it, but saved it, but into Nielsen for Duchesne. Key moment right now for Kanab to make a stop here and get back down the other, thing, other end and get some positive points out of this. Two and a half to go in the third quarter. Right side, Remond has it for Duchesne. Kanab just two points in the third. Left side high to Nielsen. She'll take the long two with her feet on the line. Missed it short. Rebound inside by Latham for the Lady Cowboys. Latham pushing the pace the other way. Going to drive right side. Go all the way in. Put it up off the glass. No good, but a foul called. And they're going to go on the ground or on the shot. They are going to go on the shot. The foul. Nope. Nope. They're saying on the ground. The underneath official was going <laughs> to give it to her on the shot. The outside official went on the ground. Now called on Ashlyn Gatherum is her third for Duchesne. She's going to leave the game. And Brindley Cornell will leave the game as well. Coming in for Kanab is going to be Jesse Glover. Pass into Jesse Anderson, and she's fouled Good. by Nilsson on the block. So Anderson will go to the line to shoot two. Good. They want to mount up those fouls. Gal makes some real positive impact every time she comes in the game. This is number 42, Anderson. She'll shoot two free throws. Coach Glazier taking the other four players over to visit with them by the bench. First free throw by Jesse. Off the rim, no good. 2.10 to go in the third quarter. 25-22, Duchesne with the three-point lead. Again, Kanab just two points in this third quarter in the first nearly six minutes. Second free throw rattles in by Anderson, so she has two points off the bench. That's that drought you're talking about that they had last time they played, and that, I don't know you can come back from that every game. Yeah, it makes it tough. Left side in the corner, it goes to Spencer. She'll come to the wing to Moon. Moon, gonna fake right, looks to drive left, cut off by McDonald, hands to Spencer, 17-footer, too hard off the rim. Rebound on the backside by Grant. She'll go back up, no good, but a foul called, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Another offensive board. I don't know if you're keeping a stat on that, but they have, they've owned the offensive glass. Foul called on Jesse Glover. That's her first in the team's third this half. Unfortunately, I do not have the rebound stats there, but yes. That'd be a fun stat to know, too, is points off of offensive rebounds. You know, how many of Duchesne's are directly related to offensive rebounds? Grant makes the first free throw, her first point of the game. All five starters have now scored for Duchesne. 
26-23, minute 53 to go in the third. Second free throw is good, so she makes them both. And sub coming into the game looks like into the game now for Duchesne will be Brianna Brady. Coming out is Ashton Spencer. Up the floor comes McDonald. Crossover dribble, it looks to step back of the right elbow, off the rim, no good, missed it, short rebound by Nelson for Duchesne. I think they need to get the rest of the team back into the offense. Grant coming the other way, up top, she looks to drive, got cut off of the double team, kick it left side to Brady, she'll go back to Grant. Minute 27 to go in the third, six point lead right now for Duchesne, Riemann with the runner in the lane, missed it off the glass, didn't draw iron, rebound Anderson. McDonald up the floor right side to Latham. Guarded by Brady. Cut off on the baseline. Crossover dribble really picked by Brady, but instead able to control it. Pass up top to Anderson. Left side now to Glover. That's Jesse. She'll go to Latham. Minute to go in the third quarter. 27-23 year score. Duchesne the four-point lead. Latham works her way right side. Going to drive in, and the foul going to be called on the drive. It'll go against, I believe, Brianna Brady. That'll be her first and the team's fourth. They're, they're looking for McDonald. McDonald is being guarded. If she went out to the restroom, the defender would go with her right now. She's being defended that closely. But the rest of the team is sitting and waiting for McDonald to do something, and she can't hardly get the ball. They've got to get the rest of those kids involved in the offensive scheme. Jesse Glover for three off the inbounds. Pass missed it off the rim. Rebound knocked to the bounds. Last touch by Riemann for Duchesne. So Canal basketball. Possibly why they brought, they just brought Brindley Cornell back in, and Cornell is somebody that can go off offensively for Canab. They're, they're gonna need somebody to get that going to get the pressure off McDonald. McDonald inbound, four around the key, left side to Cassidy Glover, out to Jesse Glover on the wing, and she'll hand off back to McDonald to set up the offense. Sid backs out near the timeline on the Thunder logo. 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. 27-23, Duchesne. Left side high, Glover, up top, she'll come to Cornell. Looking in the lane, nothing there. She'll go right high to McDonald inside to Anderson. Back to McDonald, open for three on the wing. Off the rim, off the glass, no good. Rebound inside by Glover, and she'll be fouled as she goes back up. So Cassidy Glover going to the line to shoot two. That was good ball movement that time. They came up empty, but it was great ball movement. They do get the foul call, but you know that, that was good ball movement there. That's what we were talking about. They got the rest of the team back involved in that, that offensive scheme. Now called on Alyssa Grant is her third, and Glover sneaks it over the front of the rim. She has five points for the Lady Cowboys. Jade Moon back into the game for Duchesne. She's got a game-high seven in this one. Leaving is Megan Riemann. Second free throw from Glover is good as well. So she makes them both, does Cassidy Glover, makes it a two-point game, 27-25 Duchesne, 24 seconds to go in the third. Grant picked up up top by Cornell. Goes high left to Spencer, gonna play for the final shot of the quarter are the Eagles. 15 seconds to go in the third. Grant has it up top. Picked up by Cornell, works her way high right side, looking in. Now goes to the wing to Gatherum. Gatherum off the screen by Nelson, cut off by Anderson, stripped by McDonald, two seconds to go. McDonald, and not gonna get it off as she puts it off the glass too hard anyway. And at the end of three, it is or Duchesne 27, Canab 25. We'll take the break on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. CC Auto Parts, your Napa Auto Parts store in Canab is under new ownership. You'll receive the same top quality service you've been accustomed to as new owner Ryan Black purchased the store from his grandfather, Curtis Cutler. Where Ryan's been working for the past three years. Ryan also has 12 years experience with Napa Auto Parts and has a firm commitment to serving the community. Under new ownership and located in the same place, CC Auto Parts, your Napa Auto Parts store, 115 South, 100 East, in Kanab. For over 75 years, Garcane Energy has provided quality electrical service to South Central Utah and Northern Arizona. Garcane Energy's first lines were energized in December 1939. Now Garcane serves over 16,000 square miles of service territory, including four national parks with over 2,200 miles of line. Garcane Energy just isn't about electricity. It's about improving the quality of life for their customers. That's why they give back to the community and support the Kanab Cowboys in local 1A2A schools. Garcane Energy, quality service and local control. Twenty-seven, twenty-five. Your score as we go to the fourth quarter. And Dennis, uh, what has Canab got to do to get back in this game? Down two. Well, I think the last two exchanges down 
uh, offensively. They didn't get, they got some free throws out of it. They didn't get a basket out of it. But that was to get more motion on the ball instead of everybody standing and watching uh, to see what McDonald was going to do. And I think they've got to keep that motion going, move that ball around. McDonald will still end up with it, but she'll end up with a better chance to score. Jesse Anderson has it up top for Canavas. They have a chance to tie or take the lead here early, early in the fourth quarter. Up top, Cornell. Lob inside to Anderson. Got around Nielsen. Misses the shot short. Got her own rebound. Passes it out to Glover. Glover going to drive the lane, and she'll be fouled. Is it on the shot or on the ground? All three officials called the foul. They're going to give it to the far side official. And they are going to say shooting two. So two shots yeah. for Jesse Glover. She was coming up with the ball. You just don't know if it was a shot or a pass right. that she was coming up with. But uh, good ball movement that time. First and then, free throw is good, so a chance to tie it here. Another thing to remember, too, as long as Knapp's passing around, Duchesne can score. So they, they, they take some time off the clock. They, they get Duchesne tired, and they get a good chance to score. Foul on Ashton Spencer is her third, and Jesse Glover makes both free throws. We got a tie ball game, 27-27. That's our fourth tie of the game. Seven and a half to go. Right side, Gatherham has it into the corner to Nielsen. To the wing, she'll go on the right side at two. Spencer, high left now to Grant. Up top, back to Spencer. Going to dribble left side off the double screen. Pull up in the short corner, kicks it up top to Gatherham. She'll hand off to Moon. Back to Gatherham. Left side to Spencer, she'll drive baseline. There's the double team on the low block, passes down the lane. Moon got it, puts it up and scores. They're challenging them. To, they, they, all game long, they've challenged them to go baseline with the idea that the big girl is going to come over and stop the drive. Three-pointer on the way by Cassidy Glover, no good. Anderson with a putback, missed it off the glass. Rebound again by Canal. That's going to be off the mark by Cornell. Now Jesse Glover, the rebound, should go high off the glass, no good. And now finally Gatherham has it for Duchesne. But control it, don't just throw it at the basket. <laughs> point I was trying to make back here is they keep challenging them and they're doing a good job and then the big girl is coming over but there's no backside help. And now Brindley Cornell able to come up with a steal against it. Grant left side up ahead to Jesse Glover for three and the lead short off the rim long rebound and Spencer has it for Duchesne. One on one McDonald back going to drive it against her now she picks up her dribble and a foul going to be called on Brindley Cornell as she came <laughs> into her with the body. Just overran the play when the, the offensive player tried to come back. And that's going to be the sixth team foul on Canab, third on Cornell. Megan Raymond in the game for Duchesne. Nilsson will come out. And Bailey Ramsey in for Canab as leaving the game will be Jesse Glover for the Lady Cowboys. Grant to inbound. Right side, she gets it in. But oh. lost it of bounds by Spencer. And it will be Canab basketball. The underneath official was waiting to see if the outside one wanted to call a foul, but the outside one didn't even blow his whistle. <laughs> Good defensive positions. You get wide uh, open underneath the basket, but holding the position and forcing her a little bit deeper than she wanted to be. McDonald goes off the screen by Anderson. Left side, she gets it to Ramsey. Oh. And a baseball pass inside. Too hot to handle for Cornell. She couldn't even get her hands up in time. Turnover by yeah. Canam. Whizzed right by her. So it remains a two-point Duchesne lead. 6.05 to go in the game, 29-27. Lob up ahead, left side to Raymond. To the wing to Grant. Up top, it'll go up to Gatherham. Man defense by Knapp, skip pass right side into the corner to Spencer, guarded tightly by Glover, gets it out to Moon, Moon gonna drive, scoop it up and score, Jade Moon with a game high 11. Moon is your, uh, is your player of the game for, De for Deshane, both sides of the ball, she's doing a lot of great things. Big upset in the 3A classification a moment ago as South Severe upset Union 46 to 40. Right side, Cindy McDonald for three by Canab. That's going to be off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound, Alyssa Grant. As Duchesne can add to their four-point lead, five and a half to go. She's rushing that shot. Yep. Saw, saw a Union play earlier in the year when they played Jua. That's a mighty fine basketball team. Congratulations to South Severe. High post. It's going to be Spencer. Splits the double team. Going to drive in right side. Do they count it? Yes, they do. Count the bucket and the foul for Megan Riemann. She's got a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play. Kanab is, I think, in a full-fledged panic right now. And there's still five and a half minutes to go, but they're in a full-fledged panic as they see this lead starting to grow. Foul called on Jesse Anderson. That's her second, team's seventh on Kanab. And Latham and Church back into the game for the Lady Cowboys, and Coach Glazer wants to talk about it. 5.13 to go. It's Duchesne 33, Kanab 27. We'll take the break on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network. For enjoyable Western dining, there's only one stop in Southern Utah, Houston's Trails Inn Restaurant in Kanab. 
Stop in for their special chicken fried steak with Bob's homemade country gravy and delicious Western entrees. They also offer takeout. Just call 644-2488. That's 644-2488. Houston Trails in features remote site catering. Anywhere, anytime, any place. Just phone 435-899-2140. So make plans to stop by Houston Trails in restaurant and mobile catering it can have, where the waitresses wear guns on their hips and a smile on their lips. For integrity, honesty, and technical expertise, think of Jones & DeMille Engineering. With offices in Richfield, Roosevelt, Price, Manti, Utah Valley, St. George, Vernal, and Monticello, they're committed to providing their clients with civil and structural engineering, construction management, funding procurement, surveying, GIS mapping, and material testing. They use state-of-the-art equipment to help you meet your budget, schedule, and deadlines. Visit jonesanddemille.com or visit them on Facebook. Since 1982, Jones & DeMille Engineering, your infrastructure professional shaping the quality of life. So a six-point Duchesne lead coming out of the timeout, and they can make it seven here with Megan Riemann at the line for the and one. 5.13 to go, and as you mentioned, Canav seems to have gone to a panic mode here, even though there's still plenty of time in this one. In and out on the free throw by Riemann. Jesse Anderson, the rebound. Sidney McDonald will bring it across the timeline for Canav. Goes right side to Latham, looking in for Anderson. They get it to her in the low block. And Anderson being double teamed, puts it up off the glass. No good, but a foul called. And she'll go to the line to shoot two. Need to work on her offensive game. She certainly gets good positioning down there. She's very active, and she does a good job inside. But once she gets her hands on the ball, she's a little bit of at a loss of what to do with it. She makes a nice move that way. But at that time, it seemed like she had to think about it first. But, you know, young girl, she'll be back next year and a chance to work on that offensive game. She could be a real force. First free throw is good by Anderson. All of her points that have come from the free throw line. She's now three for five. Ashton Spencer back into the game for Jade Moon. And if you're a Canab, you're just out to see Moon leave the game. Yeah, yeah. She has done a lot of great things for, for Duchesne. Second free throw is good by Anderson. So big free throws there by Jesse. Makes it a four-point game, 33-29. Under five minutes to go in this one. Gather him to inbound, gets it into Grant. Full court press put on by Kanab, and McDonald tips it away and corrals it in the corner. McDonald comes up with a steal. She'll drive the lane, lob inside. Ball got tipped, but picked up by Church. She'll go oh. to She's fouled. Caitlin Church, the bucket, and the chance at the three point play. <laughs> I was about to uh, discuss the difficulty of, or the, the wrongness of what Kanab was doing because <laughs> they, they went to a press, but they ended up with four girls on one. But they got the ball. Luckily, they got the ball because if it had break, broken that four, that deep press, it was wide open to the basket at the other end. The end one from Church is good. She's five for five from the charity stripe and has a team high seven points. Look who's coming back already. Immediately. <laughs> Jade Moon back into the game. Ashton Spencer comes out for Duchesne. Again, the press is on. It's a one-point game. Duchesne 33, Canab 32. Inbounding is Nilton. Lobbed down the middle of the floor. Nobody there but Jesse Anderson for Canab, and she'll hand off to McDonald. Panic move. Right side, Latham for three. No good. Rebound on the backside by Anderson. She'll hand to Ramsey. Misses the 15-footer on the short corner. Short off the rim. The ball's on the ground. Tie up. And Duchesne has the possession arrow. <laughs> and just like that, the, the roles have changed to, to, to Duchesne right now is panicking, I'm afraid. And Coach Jessen wants a timeout. As a result, 4.38 to go in this one. It's Duchesne 33, Canab 32. We'll take the break on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Central Com Channel 10. For integrity, honesty, and technical expertise, think of Jones & DeMille Engineering. With offices in Richfield, Roosevelt, Price, Manti, Utah Valley, St. George, Vernal, and Monticello, they're committed to providing their clients with civil and structural engineering, construction management, funding procurement, surveying, GIS mapping, and material testing. They use state-of-the-art equipment to help you meet your budget, schedule, and deadlines. Visit jonesanddemille.com or visit them on Facebook. Since 1982, Jones & DeMille Engineering, your infrastructure professional shaping the quality of life. So four and a half minutes to go in this one. Now, if you're Coach Jessen, what are you telling your team against the press of Canal? Well, first off is quit panicking. Take your time. Get the <laughs> ball. They had the players open. They wouldn't throw her the ball. Throw it in. If you can, get it to Moon and then clear it out. Nelson the inbound against the press. There she they is. They do get it to Moon. And Moon being double teamed immediately on the baseline and has to pass it out. Ball gets like the bounds. Oh. Last touch by Kanab, and Moon hits the floor. They wanted a foul call. Coach Glazer saying it went off of Moon's head. But either way, still do Shane basketball. I, I think either you've got to give that ball to Kanab out of bounds or you've got to give the foul to against Kanab the way that one cracked. 
Again, Nelson inbound, gets it into Grant. Grant looking for Moon, can't get it to her. Double teams on the sideline, and a foul going to be called on Bailey Ramsey on the push, and that'll send Alyssa Grant to the line to shoot one and one. Coach Glazer letting the official hear it. That official has, the last two calls, has not earned a lot of votes in Kanab. And we'll send her to the line to shoot one and one. They're not going to shoot? Oh, no. They, they should. They just don't realize it yet. No, one more foul for Kanab. Oh, yeah, you're right. Shoot me. You're, you're correct. One more foul for Kanab. 16 fouls. First time anybody's ever called me correct. Thank you. <laughs> the foul went on Bailey Ramsey once again. And now driving baseline is going to be Moon. Tries to pass across the lane, and McDonald jumps the passing lane and comes up with a steal. That time they get the backside rotation on that play, and they, they get the steal. Left side on the wing, Latham for three. Knocks it down. Kanab in front, 35-33, 4 5 to go in the game. Now don't foul, Kanab. Whoops. <laughs> You're too late. They didn't hear you. That one's going to go against Caitlin Church. I think the previous foul was supposed to be on Bailey Ramsey, and they gave it to Caitlin Church, which means she now has four. Wow. And I think the previous foul was supposed to be on Ramsey. Well, they could have changed that at the time, but they can't, they can't, they, now. They can't now. So Caitlin Church has four fouls. That's costly. She had the end one to pull it within one a moment ago. She's been strong on the board for them. It, if anybody's been strong other than Anderson. Right. <laughs> She's helped him inside, so that, that's costly. Seventh team foul, so Alyssa Grant at the line to shoot one and one. Kanab leads 35-33, 4-0-1 to go in the game. The front end of the one and one, off the back rim, no good. Anderson had it and able to corral it. Tries to go to McDonald, nearly too hot, but McDonald able to get it. Dribbles against Moon, she's going the other way, pushing the pace. Sydney bounced past Rice at the Glover, couldn't quite handle it, but does crowd on the baseline, but tries to pass it out. Moon able to knock it away. Out of bounds, last touch by Moon. Kanab basketball on the right sideline. Hard to see down there in front of all the fans down there. Yeah, student section right in front of us, so we can't see that sideline. Good student section from Kanab here today. Well, it's close enough to home. They can make it That's work. That's right. Come after school. They do follow the team well, though. Kanab's got good, good spirit. McDonald off the screen, works her way left side, splits the double team, and they're going to call the travel first. Took an extra step. Turnover by Kanab is there at 13. It's a great play. Looked pretty. I... Now the other official is going to come to, they're going to have a conference here of some sort. Not sure what he's, yeah, he's coming to talk to the official scorer here. I is think, he going to warn, the, going to warn, warn the, the coach? Well, it's the official that he was, that Coach Glazier was giving a hard time to a minute ago. He's talking to a different one this time, and the opposite official came over and gave that warning. He's been the baseline to midcourt line, though. I think they've still got a box, and he's been all the way to the base, all the way to midcourt, so <laughs> he's working it pretty hard. He's going to lose a pound or two today as he's working it hard. The hard part is the box isn't even where his chair is. <laughs> yeah. His chair is outside the box, so he's always going to be outside the box. Right side, three-pointer by Riemann, air ball hard. Rebound knocked out of bounds, and it will be Kanab basketball. And that right there, I, until, until they hit that earlier in the game, I'm thinking, do that. Until they hit one, let them shoot it with minimal pressure. Right, 3.29 to go in this one. Kanab leads 35-33. Sydney McDonald will bring it up the floor for the Lady Cowboys, picked up by Ashlyn Gatherham. McDonald works her way right side of the pass to Latham on the wing. Up top to Anderson. Swing it high left to Glover. Now to McDonald on the wing. Up top to Cornell. Right side high to Latham. Guarded by Spencer. Looks to drive in. Comes to a jump stop. Splits the double team. Puts up the shot. Missed it short. Rebound bounces around. Out of bounds. Last touch by Kanab. Duchesne ball. <laughs> Might have got away with a bit of a hop step there. Yeah. Came to a jump stop, then stepped. Yeah, stepped which through you the double do. team. Well, you can if, you, if they don't blow the whistle. <laughs> Grant goes right side, picked up by Cornell. Tries to oh. come up top to Moon and over through, out of bounds. 17 turnovers by Duchesne, six in this fourth quarter. They've, they've certainly flipped roles between third and fourth quarter, just like the previous game, apparently. Up the floor comes McDonald. Guarded by Gatherham, 2.45 to go on this one. Two-point Canab lead, 35-33. McDonald on the crossover, nearly lost it, but able to corral it. Crossover dribble, going to drive in against Gatherham. Step out right side to Cornell with the pass. Fifth three-pointer on the way, misses off the back of the rim. Glover the rebound, she'll go out to Latham. Low block into Anderson, working on Nielsen, puts up the shot, no good. Rebound by Cornell, and she'll be fouled as she goes back up to shoot two free throws. I, I, I hate to see teams go in stalls too early. I really do. 
I don't think you can put it to bed yet, but if you're Kanab, work hard for a really, really good shot because you're ahead. Take some time. Just don't go to sleep. Foul on Jade Moon is her first. Ninth team foul on Duchesne. First free throw by Cornell is good. She's got six. One more free throw coming. They're shooting well from the line. Make them come out and foul them. Take a little bit of time. Just don't put it to bed. Don't put it to sleep. Keep attacking, but get the best shot. Second free throw off the back throw, no good. Rebound down the lane, taken by Glover. She'll go right side to McDonald. And McDonald's going to reverse direction, come high left to Latham. Into the corner to Cornell. She would want a three-pointer on the way. Whoa! Dagger. Grimley Cornell with nine, and it's now a 12-0 run by Kanab after trailing 33-27. A timeout call. They lead 39-33 with 2.15 to go in the game. We'll take the break on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. By now, I'm sure you've all heard about the quality, comfortable furniture at Kanab Furniture in Kanab. But just for a reminder, let me mention that Kanab Furniture currently has great pricing on all furniture and carpet throughout the store. In need of a new sofa or recliner? Go to Kanab Furniture. How about a mattress? Go to Kanab Furniture. Maybe it's time for a new dinner table or bedroom furniture. Again, Kanab Furniture is the place to go. Quality furniture and carpet at even better prices. Kanab Furniture, 681 Shinley Drive in Kanab. Honey's Marketplace invites you to experience their refreshing variety and signature items. Honey's Marketplace features a wide selection of camping supplies, a garden nursery, and fresh floral department. Experience fresh baked artisan breads and pastries in their bakery. Check out their great cut fruit program with wonderful fresh cut fruit daily. And everyone loves Honey's famous talking truck, Rusty. Get all this with the hometown service you deserve. Fresh, friendly, and close to home. Honey's Marketplace, 260 East, 300 South in Kanab. Six-point Kanab lead after the big three-pointer by Brindley Cornell. They trailed by six with 5.13 to go. Now with 2.15 to go, they lead by six. Deshane basketball coming out of the timeout by Coach Jessup. High left side, it'll be Spencer for the Eagles. Off the screen by Gatherum, got around McDonald, cut off on the baseline by Anderson, tries to pass out of it, knocked away by Gatherum, picked up by Cornell, but she'll be stripped out of bounds. Last touch by Duchesne, Kanab basketball. That's a good play by Moon because they had, Kanab had two girls streaking down to the basket, wide open, nobody else on the defensive end of the floor. If she hadn't stopped that, if they were looking to make that pass. That's a wide open layup. Across the timeline is McDonald for Kanab. They've gone into a four corners offense as the Lady Cowboys looking to stall this one out with a six point lead. McDonald gets around to Cornell. Cornell left wing, works away to the middle of the floor near the timeline. Guarded by Moon and crossover dribble. And McDonald picks it up, but she's either going to be fouled, travel, or an over and back. And they don't call nothing. Picked up by Moon. Moon going to go right side to gather and put it up. Count she's fouled. The McDonald camp is upset. The McDonald girl was on the end, on the line, that midcourt line. She was struggling, but the East Duchesne girl just kind of bodied into her and knocked her across it. And the coach had a right to be a little upset right there. You, you could have called a turnover in two ways on Kanab or the foul on Duchesne. Nothing got called, and as a result, you got an and one the other way. Yeah, yeah. Gather them with eight, a chance to make it nine. Misses that one short. Rebound by Jesse Anderson for the Lady Cowboys. The foul, by the way, was on Brimley Cornell. That is her fourth. And now McDonald hits the four hard. No foul called and picked up by Duchesne. Grant across the timeline. Minute 20 to go. 39-35. Can have the four-point lead. Right side, Moon has it. She'll drive in. Cut off by Latham. Step back. 15-footer off the back of the rim. No good. Anderson rebound for Kanab. She'll get it to McDonald. McDonald Gotta pushes the pace. Tries to pass ahead. Knocked by Grant. Picked up by Glover. And now they hand to McDonald. And they'll slow things down. And now she will be fouled this time as again she hits the floor as, along with Jade Moon. And a foul going to be called on at Jade Moon. That'll be her second. And McDonald goes to the line to shoot two. When Kanab sets up for their four corners, uh, uh, they're just me, but they're setting up way too deep on that half court. They need to set that up farther up uh, up towards that three-point line. So they You're got allowing more room them to, to have work. that extra defender with the timeline. Yeah. yeah. First free throw by McDonald is good. She's got six. So an off night for City McDonald, but it's well, uh, obviously that's what Duchesne's trying to do. It's an off night because Duchesne's played some mighty fine defense on her. Second free throw is good as Sydney makes them both. She now has seven, pushes the lead back to six, 41-35. 58 seconds to go. Left side, Spencer up top to Grant. Grant works her way right side with the dribble. Into the corner to Spencer. She'll launch the long two off the top of the backboard. No good. Rebound by, that's going to be Latham for Kanab, and she'll be fouled by Moon. 
That'll be the third on Moon and send Latham to the line to shoot two for the Lady Cowboys. Well, now that, that three-point shooting or whether or not they can really comes into play for Duchesne. Yeah. They, they've got to hit something from the outside now. Latham's first free throws will come right here from the charity stripe tonight. First one is up, in Ooh. and out. 45.8 seconds to go. 41-35 is your score. Canab was led by as many as eight in this game, but that was back in the third quarter to start really early in the third quarter. And Duchesne has led by as many as six in this one. Second free throw, no good by Latham. Rebound, Duchesne up ahead, right to the Gatherum. Gatherum going to drive right, puts up the shot, blocked in a foul called, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Foul's going to go against Latham. That'll be her second. Team's ninth. Don't know that you want to do that, but again, the good hustle by Kanab to get back on that and stop the drive. First free throw from Gatherum is good. She has nine points for Duchesne. She averaged about four and a half a game, but she had 12 against Kanab the first time around. Got to get the double figures again here. And she does as she makes both free throws. Back to a four point game, 41-37. McDonald in the backcourt. Coach Jessen saying, where's our press? And now McDonald's going to be run into by Gatherum. So Sydney will go to the line to shoot two for the Lady Cowboys. Duchesne's got to know that Kanab's idea here is to get the ball in her hands. You, you want to put someone on her and keep the ball out of her, not even let her get the ball on that press. If you're going to run a press, black her out. Don't let her even touch the ball. First free throw off the back of the rim. No good by McDonald. She's got one more coming. And Coach Jessen wants a timeout. 34 seconds to go on this one. It's Kanab 41, Duchesne 37. Again, we'll take the break on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. The Kane County School District wants to wish the Kanab High School Cowboys good luck this season. Kane County School District, where excellent instruction empowers immeasurable opportunities. The home of Kanab Elementary, Kanab Middle, and Kanab High School, along with Valley Elementary and Valley High, and Big Water School and Lake Powell School. Good luck once again to the Kanab High School Cowboys from the staff at the Kane County School District. High School, 33 seconds to go in this one with Kanab leading Duchesne 41 to 37. Coach Jessen, it's interesting as watching him He's trying to coach at the same time he's trying to retie his tie. <laughs> I'm thinking at this point in time, don't worry about that tie. There's more important stuff to do. McDonald with one more free throw coming, missed the first and misses the second off the back of the rim. Rebound by Duchesne as Kanab had cleared the lane. 30 seconds to go. Grant left side. Tries to pass to Spencer off her leg, but picked back up by Grant. She'll launch the long oh, three. Oh, no, 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 and no. And they no, bail no. her out with a foul. No. Ripley oh. Cornell had her back turned, and they're going to call the foul on her. It was a, it was a long jam. Fifth. The Duchesne girl pushed her into the shooter. That's not a foul. I'm sorry. She was trying to move away. And Cornell oh. will foul out with 25 seconds left. Oh, dear. Three free throws coming for Alyssa Grant. How unfortunate. Unfortunate for Knab. And a three-pointer to boot. That shot wasn't even close. First free throw from Grant. No good. Into the game for Cornell was Bailey Ramsey. Now in, in street ball, they would tell you that that's vindication. The call was wrong. That's right. Ball never lies. <laughs> Second free throw from Grant. Got that one to fall. Okay, it's half right. <laughs> now the deciding vote. So three points now from Grant. Makes it a three-point game. She can cut it to two here with 25 seconds left. And knocks that one down. So Grant makes two of three. She's got four points. And Coach Glazier wants a timeout. 25 seconds to go in this one. Full timeout called. It is Kanab 41, Duchesne 39. And again, we'll take the break on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. 
Make sure you plan a trip to Lumber Plus True Value for all of your project needs. Right now, a DeWalt 7 and a quarter inch circular saw blade is only $4.99. This 24 tooth tough tungsten carbide tipped blade has an anti stick rim to reduce friction and gum up. An ultra thin kerf results in smoother cuts. Check out this great bargain of the month along with other project essentials while supplies last at Lumber Plus True Value in Kanab. Behind every project is a true value. Amerigas is the nation's largest supplier of propane and propane equipment. With over 650 locations all across the country, you can sleep easy knowing Amerigas is right there to serve you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Make it Amerigas. For a location near you, check your local yellow pages or visit us at Amerigas.com. Enjoy benefits such as automatic delivery, flexible payment options, and customer referral awards. Amerigas, America's propane company. Reliable, safe, and responsive. A two-point game right now in Canal Basketball with the 41-39 lead over Duchesne coming out of a timeout. 25 seconds to go in this one. McDonald gets free and they get it to her immediately. And the triple team comes. She'll pass down the floor to Latham. Latham being double team. She'll get it up ahead at two Ramsey. Ramsey right side and reach in foul going to be called on Gatherham. That will be her fifth. So Gatherham will leave with 16 seconds to go in this one. You did mention she's one of their three-point threats too, right? She has the most on the year, 12. Now, oh, Coach wow. Jessen wants to talk about it. He'll take a full timeout. Are Six there timeouts <laughs> left? 16 <laughs> seconds to go in this one. It is once again Kanab 41, Duchesne 39. Bailey Ramsey going to the line to shoot two, and we come back on the Mid Utah Radio Sports Network and Central Com Channel 10. Southern Utah News, the leading newspaper in Utah, announces some exciting changes to the paper. Southern Utah News is now presented in broadsheet format, which makes it bigger and better while still remaining small enough to care. The award-winning Southern Utah News provides extensive news coverage that affects residents of Southern Utah. Call the Southern Utah News for a subscription or for all types of printing services, such as company invoices, letterhead, pamphlets, business forms, and more. 644-2900. That's 644-2900. Zion Pharmacy is your old-fashioned corner drugstore with a total health care center offering computerized prescription service, prompt refills, and friendly service. Zion Pharmacy carries a fine selection of tasteful gifts and greeting cards, and they can bill Medicare for diabetic and respiratory supplies. Courtney can also compound a medication, changing its strength, taste, or route of delivery to best suit the patient. Since 1984, Zion Pharmacy has been your old-fashioned corner drugstore. 14 East Center in Kanab, your gateway to better health. 16 seconds to go. Bailey Ramsey at the free throw line to shoot two for Kanab. And the Cowboys will clear the lane. So just the three Duchesne Eagles there to try to get the rebound. Ramsey trying to put the Lady Cowboys back up by four. First free throw is good. Oh. That's a nerve-wracking situation. She made that look really, really easy. Just a sophomore for Kanab is Ramsey, her first point of the game. Second one. Whoa. In and out, off the glass and in. Got okay. it to fall. She used all of it on that one. <laughs> Four-point lead. Up ahead, right side to Moon. Moon pulls up on the wing. Guarded tightly by Latham. Up top to Grant. She'll take the straightaway three. Air ball out of bounds. Kanab basketball with seven seconds left in the length of the floor to go. And Caitlin Church going to come back into the game for Kanam. We haven't seen much of her since she picked up her fourth foul early in this fourth quarter. She comes in for the Anderson girl, but what, a, what an effect the Anderson girl has had in the game. Full court press by Duchesne. The pass will come into Latham, and they will foul her with five and a half seconds to go. And that will send Latham to the line to shoot two. She is 0 for 2 from the charity stripe in this one. A little bit late, but they did what, we, what I suggested, make it go to somebody besides McDonald. She fell out. That is it. Jade Moon they gave it to. No, that's Ashton Spencer, Spencer who fell out. Mm -hmm. I must have gave one of Gatherums because Gatherums still in the game. I said she had fell out. Must have gave one of Gatherums to, or Spencer to Gatherum earlier. Ooh. First free throw by Latham is short. One more free throw coming. And off the rim, no good. Missed them both, but here comes Jade Moon across the timeline, the three-pointer. Now off the glass, no good, and that'll do it. Kanab will survive and advance 
with a 43-39 win over Duchesne. The four seed from Region 18 moves on to the state tournament next week at the Sevier Valley Center. Rich Building will play the number one ranked team in 2A, the Wasatch Academy Tigers. We'll take a break and come back with the Sunrise Engineering Post Game Show next on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and Centricom Channel 10. Zion Pharmacy is your old-fashioned corner drugstore with a total health care center offering computerized prescription service, prompt refills, and friendly service. Zion Pharmacy carries a fine selection of tasteful gifts and greeting cards, and they can bill Medicare for diabetic and respiratory supplies. Courtney can also compound a medication, changing its strength, taste, or route of delivery to best suit the patient. Since 1984, Zion Pharmacy has been your old-fashioned corner drugstore. 14 East Center in Kanab, your gateway to better health. For super low prices and weekly specials, stop by Kane County's full-service grocer, Glazier's Family Market in Kanab. Not only do they have the highest standard of customer service and the friendliest checkers in Utah, you'll save 15 cents per gallon on high-quality Chevron gasoline when you spend $50 or more. And you'll save at Glazier's Family Market with their weekly specials. For guaranteed freshness in their meat and produce departments plus short lines, visit Kane County's full-service grocer, Glazier's Family Market in Kanab. CC Auto Parts.